We're trying to promote the Green New Deal. The well, there are reasons why I can't, because there's no way to pay for it. I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. I don't think that working on an issue for 30 years alone is what qualifies as is what makes someone qualified uh, to solve an issue. Wow, I think that's a slap. Uh, Democratic Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez hitting back at Senator Dianne Feinstein and others she labels a climate delayers after the senator told a group of children there's no way really to pay for the Green New Deal that's been proposed. Joining me now, Republican strategist Holly Turner, uh, Democratic strategist Antoine Seawright. Um, Holly, all she was saying, Dianne Feinstein here, is kids, you know, uh, this isn't doable the way it stands now. She's not anti climate change. She's just anti this approach to dealing with it, right? Right. I mean, it was it was the most ma rational moment that a Democrat has had all year. I'm so glad that it was captured on film. But I mean, that poor little kid who said, uh, you know, we, we spend tons of money on the military. Why can't we just spend that here? I mean, this is horrible what the Democrats did in this situation. They tried to entrap one of their own to try and bully her into voting uh, for something that's going to fail on the Senate floor. Uh, there's there. She is right. The senator's right. There is no way that we can afford this. I mean, in the past 300 years, we've spent 18 trillion dollars on military uh, in this country. This, the Green New Deal is going to cost us 100 trillion dollars. I mean, it is just not affordable. Antoine, do you think that this is about a bigger issue among Democrats about who speaks for the heart and soul of the party here? Those who embrace this this green agenda that the congresswoman does as Senator Markey of Massachusetts, but haven't looked under the hood to see that there's very little there there or ways to about paying for that. I think this is uh, another lesson. This is what I call growing pains, and this is what we are experiencing in the Democratic Party. But my advice to AOC is to take a lesson from Jay-Z when he says nobody wins when the family feuds. And so her going out bashing Senator Feinstein is probably not good for the long-term health of our party. Legislation always evolves over time. Just because something starts out some way doesn't mean it has to end up that way. So instead of her working with the senator, working with her colleagues to come to a more a realistic, pragmatic approach. She goes out and bash them on camera for likes on, on social media, and that doesn't get us anywhere as a party, and it definitely doesn't get us anywhere as a country in solving this issue, because this issue cuts across party lines, and so I'm somewhat disappointed. All right. You know, Holly, Republicans, as you pointed out, too, haven't been at the best fiscal stewards. You didn't say that, but of course, with, with the, the spending on that they've had, they've done little to sort of rein it in, so both parties are to blame for you know, a lot of pie-in-the-sky goals without finding a way to pay for it or offer anything approaching fiscal sanity. Are you worried about that and what these, these kids are brought up in a world, they see that and say, well, go ahead and just pay for it the way you usually do without paying yeah. for it? Yeah, it, it absolutely is concerning. And, and I think it also brings up uh, something that's really important. And, you know, we laugh about the Green New Deal and it's, you know, pie in the sky. But what it really is, it's not about climate change at all. I mean, the experts have said that even if the U.S. Uh, reduced its carbon emissions by 100 percent, it would have a negligible effect on the global temperature. So we know this is not about climate change. So you, are you denying climate change? No, I'm saying it would have a negligible effect on the climate. What I am saying is that this is about the massive redistribution of wealth. And Ocasio-Cortez has said it herself, this is a social justice bill. And so I think we need to be talking about the real issues here, and that is the socialist agenda that the no, Democratic no, no, no. Party has Let's turned to. And that's what this but, is well, about. This is not about the climate. about just the fact that the party is getting concerned with what the congresswoman is saying, that, they're, that, that she might be leading them down crazy town. Environmental injustice is a problem in this country. Absolutely, I'm glad the Democrats are the ones who want to blow are the you horn on the issue. That she now, is not helping that cause. No, no, I, I, I think what she's not doing is she's not helping our long-term goals okay. as a party. And what, what I will say is the right-wing media has made her the media darling, so that sometimes comes off as a distraction. But this is a prime example in which well, it's not the right-wing uh, media that's bashing her now, right now. No, no, it's no, no, no. What I'm saying is when, every time she tweets or every Every time she does anything, it is an issue. It's mainstream for the right wing media, and this is a prime example well, in which it's some of her. For everyone, she speaks no, 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 to no, the passionate right? Don't play the right wing media. That's so. Cavuto, this is a prime Mr. example. 
<laughs> this is a prime example of someone in her, right. own, in her own party calling her out saying, wait a minute, slow down. That's right. This is That's not right. the approach to take it. All right. So Guys, she does not speak for the Democratic Party, to be clear, regardless oh. of what she the right She is the says. new Democrat Party. We'll see. We'll see what happens, guys. It is uh, entertaining. All right. I appreciate both of you. Freshman Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has very quickly become the young face of American socialism. And after taking fire from fellow Democrats over Amazon.com, pulling out of New York and taking with it 25,000 potential jobs, now even the far left is taking Ocasio-Cortez to task. Here's the thing. I am a proud progressive, and what progressives need to do is show working people that we will get more for them. Tonight's power panel, Rochelle Ritchie, former press secretary for the Democratic Policy and Communications Committee, Charlie Kirk, executive director and turning point, uh, of Turning Point USA, and David Harsani is senior editor at The Federalist. Thank you all for sticking around and, David, for joining our discussion. Um, I'll start with you. Um, de Blasio says they want to be able to communicate to America that you can be progressive and not kill jobs. Can they do it? Apparently they can't do it. Um... The, the difference between, you know, populist socialism that sounds good and, and, and all of that and the actual nuts and bolts of policy are very different. And uh, AOC is, uh, is more the real life socialist than de Blasio because she is actually practicing what she preaches and it works this way. You can't uh, embrace big companies, you can't give them any incentives and you, for competition and you can't bring them, bring them into Manhattan or anywhere else or New York. So. Um, I actually think it can't work, and that's, that's the rift that's happening in the Democratic Party right now. Well, she certainly has become um, the star of the show for a lot of people, uh, a star on social media, and young people being very attracted to her message. Rochelle, I want to play something that she has said uh, now about the Berlin Wall. No matter how you feel about, a, about the wall, you know, I think it's a moral abomination. I think it's like the Berlin Wall. Well, Ed Morsi uh, points out this. He says the Ber Berlin Wall's moral abomination came from its intent to trap people inside a communist system when they wanted to flee, at which it largely succeeded for its 28 years lifespan. Only 5,000 crossed over into freedom during its three-decade abomination. They didn't care a whit if anyone wanted to enter East Berlin. If nothing else, you'd think that a cheerleader for socialism would know to avoid references like this. And Rochelle, she thinks she's getting unfair treatment because there's such a media spotlight on her. But... She is provocative. Well, there's a media spotlight on her because of the things that she says and, and because of some of the very outlandish ideas that she has. I mean, she has this whole socialist idea, Medicare for all, education for, for all. Look, I definitely want people to be able to get the health care they need. I definitely want people to be able to get the education they need. But there has to be a fair process in order to make those things happen. This whole debacle that happened with Amazon, I live in Manhattan. And so it's really unfortunate for those people that live in Long Island City that had an opportunity to get a job. I'm not sure what she thought was degrading about an average salary of $150,000 a year. I mean, this, this is a woman who came from being a bartender, and now she's telling other people that an average salary of $150,000 a year is not good enough for you. She has done a lot of damage to people that wanted those jobs, the people, the businesses that were planning uh, for people to come and work there, the the the, uh, the, or the low, um I'm sorry, the realtors mm -hmm. that were uh, refurbishing their, their brownstones to have people come and move in. And now all of a sudden, it's just over. And Amazon is going to take their business elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure any other city is going to be glad to have them in their city. Well, and Charlie, we had new polling out just in the last few days about socialism, capitalism. Um, and, and for the most part, people rejected the idea of socialism in favor of capitalism. But the group that we saw, one of the biggest groups most interested in this were young people. Here's what Rush Limbaugh has to say about why the attraction? We've done a real disservice to our young people. You look at this new Green Deal and you look at the things that they think are true. They live in the greatest country ever. They have more opportunity for contentment, happiness, success than ever. And they think they live in a country that's unjust and immoral. They have an ill-educated, mal-educated, and it's really a shame. Charlie, where's the disconnect? I mean, you're a youngster. Yeah. Well, well, look, this is something I fight on college campuses every single day, and that 
our organization, Turning Point USA, is up against. And look, for, for years I've been trying to warn people that there will be an outward socialist under the age of 35 that will come to Congress and that person will gain a lot of momentum. And I knew that because the college campuses are a harbinger of things to come. What she is saying is exa the exact dogma that is taught in our universities. America's a bad place, business is evil, redistributive policies are going to work, and socialism hasn't been tried. And her, it, it seems very radical to mainstream America, because it is, but this is the philosophy that is being taught in our universities. I like to call it, is the campus has come to Congress, and the rest of America can decide if you really want this sort of ideology to be mainstream or uh, continue to stay in our universities. I know, I know for one, I'm going to fight as hard as I can to make sure our generation has not embraced these ideals. All right, Charlie, Rochelle, and David, thank you all very much on tonight's thank Power you. Panel. Thank you. She may be the darling of many progressive Democrats, but freshman Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is taking enormous criticism from some in her own party and her own state for her role in Amazon's decision to cancel plans for a huge investment in New York. Here's correspondent Doug McElway. Democrats are often called the party of the big tent, but critics say Amazon's decision to bail on a new headquarters in Queens, New York, has exposed the party's other reputation as a circular firing squad. Why in the world would you celebrate driving 25,000 jobs out of Long Island City? I mean, that is just ridiculous. Amazon said the average salary for those 25,000 new employees would have exceeded $150,000 per year, bringing in an estimated $27.5 billion in tax revenues over the next 25 years. A windfall, especially considering the state only had to give up $3 billion in tax incentives to entice Amazon. But the increasing leftward anti-business tilt of the party helped poison the deal. One Amazon executive told NBC, quote, if you talk to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, it's never Amazon. What this is a celebration of is that everyday people in the community stood up and they wanted a say in what was happening in their own backyard. Polls found a majority of New Yorkers supported the deal, despite Amazon's non-union policy, even in this union-rich city. And see what basically we're left with now. The bombed-out cars in our neighborhood. This is not Shangri-La over here. We needed this over here. We needed this. More traditional Democratic politicians supported it, too. Governor Andrew Cuomo fumed, quote, a small group of politicians put their own narrow political interests above their community. We wanted to negotiate a better deal. We didn't want to see those on the left, those who are anti-capitalist completely killed the deal. It's the latest fissure in a party which is smarting from the controversies of late-term abortion, blackface and sexual harassment in Virginia, an embarrassing rollout of what some Democrats say is the overly ambitious Green New Deal, and accusations of anti-Semitism within its caucus. Those controversies are all boxes that President Trump may be checking for later use when his re-election campaign gears up. Brett? Doug, thank you.